Hello everyone, I'm McClendon, and let's talk about Ahsoka. I know the show ended a little bit ago, but only now am I able to actually make a video on it. Thanks, high school. I'm just gonna say it now. This show went from decent to pretty bad. Like, pretty lame. Let's go into it. I'm gonna explain why I feel this way. Let's start off with the first two episodes, Master and Apprentice and Toil and Trouble. So I really enjoyed the opening to this show. The first six minutes of episode one were pretty epic. It felt very Star Wars-y, if you know what I mean, if that makes any sense at all. To be honest, I found the first two episodes to be not that bad, especially considering I haven't watched Rebels. It wasn't hard for me to understand the importance of finding Ezra and the importance of stopping Thrawn. I feel like they did a pretty good job making you feel the importance of it without even needing you to watch Rebels. I do have some questions about stab wounds in Star Wars because they are that is the most inconsistent injury in Star Wars. But overall, I think what got me in the first two episodes was Balin and Shin. Seeing an almost prequel era look into a master and apprentice relationship was dope. Like, random, but I love Shin's Padawan braid. They are very interesting characters for sure. Ray Stevenson did a very great job portraying a character who's like a Jedi. Well, he's not a Jedi in the story, but he had a Jedi past. I miss when like characters were like that. Um, it's unfortunate that Ray Stevenson passed away, honestly. However, I will admit this. Early in the episodes, I found Ahsoka weird, and I think we we all did. Everyone is talking about how stoic and emotionless she is throughout the show. I tried to convince myself that maybe this is because she's older now, and she's afraid to let her guard down because of everything that happened to her with the Jedi. But honestly, I'm not even completely sure that's the case. Like, I don't think... <laughs> I don't, I don't really think that's the reason why she's so emotionless. I'll come back to this later um, when I discuss the other episodes. The third episode, Time to Fly. I actually really like this episode and it's pretty cool that I did considering that it wasn't an episode that I liked because the showrunners milked cameos. It was actually a pretty decent episode. I enjoyed the space battle. I enjoyed seeing more of Shin. It was overall pretty cool. I'm not going to go too much into detail on that episode. I just want to say it's cool. I liked it. All right, to the fourth and fifth episodes, Fallen Jedi and Shadow Warrior. These episodes were everyone's favorites. The fourth episode was pretty cool. I enjoyed watching Shin and Sabine's uh, fight. Um, I think the best part about it was that they didn't make Sabine pull a ray and then just beat the crap out of Shin somehow. I like how they made her struggle. I also enjoyed Ahsoka's fight against Balin. And off topic, but I want to point out how Balin's lightsaber stance is a little similar to Qui-Gon Jinn's. Like, I, I kind of, like, noticed that the first time I watched it, I was like, that's a, that's an interesting stance there. I also think it was pretty cool how Ahsoka's immediate reaction to thinking Sabine was killed by Shin was going dark side on her. Bro, she slammed her into that rock with the intent to kill. Like, no one can tell me otherwise. I do also think it is realistic that Sabine went with Balin. I personally love it when a character is not written to always make the right choices. It makes them round and relatable. And even though, like, that's annoying, like, Sabine, what the frick? Like, we almost, we could have won. We could have protected this galaxy like i feel like it's realistic then we saw morgan elsbeth and the gang go into light speed bada bing bada boom then we get the cameo at the end woohoo so that was that was cool something i did not like about this episode was hera bringing her kid into the battle like into a dangerous area like i swear parents in action and adventure movies or shows are the worst parents so now the fifth episode was dope obviously we got to see hayden christensen again and his incredible lightsaber skills ariana greenblatt did a good job portraying a younger ahsoka and i really liked anakin's line i've heard that before when ahsoka told him that she wouldn't fight back because i mean connection to return of the jedi i love that which of course, some people were talking about this in the Star Wars community that it proves that this is actually Anakin and not like 
Ahsoka's imagination of Anakin because Ahsoka wasn't there when that happened, so it has to actually be Anakin. And also, I need to mention this, this episode proved that Hayden was not the problem in the prequels. It was the writing. In this episode, Hayden was basically just given Matt Lanter lines and he did a phenomenal job portraying Anakin. It was great. I loved it, honestly. I, lo I love him. Anyways, that was a cool cameo. I liked that episode. And we saw Ahsoka confront her fears, which I thought was going to be character development. And I thought that was going to be her getting away from her stoic personality. But yeah, we'll talk about that later. Pretty decent episode. Now, episode 6, Far, Far Away. For me, I think this is when things started going downhill. I don't even really remember this episode, like, that much, which is a problem, considering that this is when Thrawn and Ezra were found. I might butcher his name, but I really like how Lars Mikkelsen portrayed Thrawn. I think he did a great job. Uh, maybe? I don't know. I haven't watched Rebels, so I don't know if he, like, totally messed up Thrawn's character, but I liked him. I think he plays a villain pretty well. We also saw in this episode how Shin and Balin are seen as expendable, which is pretty interesting, and we get a tiny, a tiny bit of insight into Balin's past and his plan. Then we meet Ezra, and it's the most anticlimactic thing ever. Like, it was... That was- it, it wasn't- it wasn't it to me. It low-key kind of sucked, honestly. Like, even I was let down, and I haven't even watched Rebels. Yeah, I don't have much to say about this episode. I kind of wanted to watch it again before this video, but I'm too lazy. Now, episode 7, Dreams and Madness. Pretty awful. We got to see more of Anakin, and we also got a C-3PO cameo, which I guess was cool. We also see Sabine and Ezra reuniting, and I think it's nice how you can see- that they're friends like i think they did a really good job writing it to be casual especially after seeing so much not so casual conversations with people taking 30 seconds to think before they answer the question like uh <laughs> like i i did enjoy seeing them talk because it was a little it was a little refreshing again we get into the most itty bitty insight into Balin's plan. Shin and him separate and I'm still trying to figure out what they're gonna do with that and like what's that leading up to. Then this episode got really bad. Ezra and Sabine basically get jumped and then Ezra does something that made the entire Star Wars community mad. He didn't use his lightsaber even though Sabine offered it to him. He basically says, I gave it to you, the force will guide me anyways, which to me, was very poor writing. It was obvious that they really just wanted Sabine to keep the lightsaber in that moment, and they almost gave us a valid reason, but they didn't flesh it out. Instead of him just saying, I gave it to you, he should have told her she was a Jedi and that she needed to act like one, or else like she'd really never get anywhere. Tell her she needs to stop relying on him if she wants to find her path. It would be better if he was like, this is a step forward, or this is something you need to do yourself. But no, they were super lazy about that writing. And what's even worse is that they made him a comic relief. Like, he was sitting here joking and laughing and being funny in the middle of the battle. I'm sorry, but Star Wars is not the MCU. When a character is purposely trying to be funny in battle, it doesn't sit well with Star Wars content. Like, in the MCU, it works. I mean, it hasn't been working lately because they just do it too much now, but in older MCU movies, it worked. But in Star Wars, I feel like it rarely works. Especially, like, if it's, like, a serious situation. Like, a character can be funny, but in a serious situation, like, no. It was stupid to me. However, I haven't watched Rebels, so I don't know if he's been a comic relief this whole time. Like, I don't know if that's supposed to be his character. There was also a fight between Ahsoka and Balin that I don't really remember that well, honestly. It wasn't as cool as the last one. I do remember when Ahsoka caught up with Ezra and Sabine and tried to recruit Shin, and then she ran off after she realized she was about to get left behind. And I will say, I did like how they didn't make Shin join their team immediately and be like, okay, I'll join you. You know, like, I like how she just left. Like, she didn't care. Um, I feel like that's very realistic, and I'm glad they did not rush that. It makes sense with her character. Episode 8, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Wait. 
oops <laughs> i met the jedi the witch and the warlord this episode to me it wasn't completely horrible like it wasn't like as bad as the last one but it did not conclude anything at all so ezra has a lightsaber again woohoo there was also a mention of kane and jarrus which i'm pretty sure made rebels fans happy anyways what i did not like about this episode or something i remember not liking was that sabine's powers just came too quickly the lightsaber pool was believable but pushing ezra i don't know like i i, I don't know about that like i know he didn't completely get up but still I don't know before in the earlier episodes like it wasn't coming to her at all and i liked how the talent wasn't coming to her quickly but then it just all got rushed in the last episode maybe instead of like having her have nothing until the last episode maybe they should have just had some small steps in like maybe the last three episodes and then it led up to this i don't know i just feel like having that all happen in the last episode just came too fast there's not much i have to say about this episode honestly because it didn't answer anything as i said before ahsoka was so stoic in the entire show and we never really got an answer to that i honestly thought they were going to explain why she's so emotionless now but they didn't like i think they just wanted her to be cool and honestly everyone was so stoic in the show like not a lot of people had any emotion and that's why i didn't really like hera that much in the show like she had no reaction or emotion to literally anything and i heard that that's not even how her character is written in rebels i also don't like how we got no answers about balin and shin like i'm not sure if there's gonna be a second season but even if there will be we got absolutely nothing nada we did not get anything about them they were the most intriguing characters to me but i'm starting to be convinced that their whole purpose was just being mysterious i also hate how hera's reaction to seeing ezra was just yay ezra you're back and not where in the world are ahsoka and sabine like i was actually like expecting her to be like hey ezra and then be like where's ahsoka and sabine but that never happened like did you forget they went too? I feel like the problem with this show was that it was made to be so deep. Like, so serious, so deep. And we got nothing at the end. I saw this funny comment on YouTube that said that most of the show's runtime was probably just the characters pondering in between sentences. So, this episode was really a letdown. It wasn't absolutely horrible, but the fact that it was a conclusion is crazy. Don't get me wrong, shows can end on cliffhangers especially if there's gonna be a second season but we got no answers to literally anything the ending was just sabine and ahsoka are stranded in the other galaxy and thrawn returned the end no answers about balin and shin like what was what even was their purpose the whole time no answers about ahsoka really being emotionless now and it, it was just empty i feel like the ending was very empty i feel like the show had potential and much more could have been done with it but they they didn't do much with it like i said it's not horrible like the first five episodes were actually pretty cool but it just fell off at the end that's about it though what would i rate this show i would probably give it like since half of it was good well actually more than half of it was good actually um well there's still some things i didn't like in the beginning i don't know like if i were to rate this show i'd probably either give it a 5 out of 10 or a 6 out of 10 um 5.5 maybe but again that's about it i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did like it subscribe if you want more content like this and i will see you guys next time